Lord forgive me for this trap shit Sergeant Smack making backflip Telly hangs it with the action With the vital speaking Spanish Frank Matthews how I vanish Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut Gold BBS is on a beamer When fat cat with 10 queens up Fall off the profit not the re-up Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus Uptown like I'm baby man Just caught a touchdown from the bay there's growing concern in Florida over a number of bizarre crimes linked to a street drug called Waka. It's one of the newer chemicals in the booming so-called designer drug market. The drug can be snorted, smoked, injected, or even swallowed. So what is... Out to the street as people come from near and far to support Kimberly Walker, the newest owner of a BP gas station who is making history, too. Let's make sure everything is sorted. Kimberly Walker owns many businesses, but during COVID-19, she decided to invest in an industry she had never dealt with before. We need peanut butter. Oil. As I looked around, I realized that gas stations didn't close down through the COVID-19. So I was like a wise investment. It's here on this busy corner off of Arlington Expressway where there was lots of talk about the new owner. Walker says BP called her with news that she had made history by investing in the gas station. Since the grand opening, Walker says she has been named the first black owned BP gas station in the state. And after opening, it sold 58,000 gallons of gas at a record pace. We received a call from BP stating that uh, we were the top sellers in the whole Duval of gas. The wife and mother of six also buys homes, has a restaurant, a lawn service, and a car wash service. Walker says she's not just doing this to support the community, but to leave a legacy for her family. I am the first in my family to um, ever own um, be an entrepreneur and I want to set um, example, lead by example for my kids um, and then leave a legacy back here for my kids. And Walker hopes that other minorities will be interested in buying gas stations. She plans on buying others as well. Also, she says she wants to thank her business partner, Jasmine LaShawn, for going on this venture with her. We've learned that a woman who police say played a major role in a large scale drug trafficking organization has made headlines before. I'll show you a video of 44-year-old Kimberly Walker. News for Jax previously profiled her when she became the first African-American to own a BP gas station in Florida. This was last summer. That gas station is located in Arlington. Well, now she's one of eight people indicted by a federal grand jury. News for Jax reporter Eric Avani has been following the story since we first learned of charges yesterday. Eric's joining us live with what we learned today. Well, we learned that Kimberly... Uh Kimberly Walker still owns this BP gas station. We also found out that federal agents used News for Jack's video of a story that we did on her a year ago about purchasing this gas station as part of their investigation. The details in these federal court documents reveal 44-year-old Kimberly Walker appears to have been the person calling the shots in what is described by federal investigators as a drug trafficking organization. According to transcripts from phone conversations that were intercepted by federal agents, Walker made sure narcotics were available for sale at this home on 14th Street, which is described by undercover agents as a trap house or a home where narcotics are stored and sold from. According to the report, there were also phone conversations between Walker and a relative about bagging synthetic drugs 
later identified as Flacca and Molly. Another intercepted conversation includes comments made by Walker about co-defendant Brandizio Williams, who was shot. Walker is recorded saying they don't want to take the bullet out because it may cause more damage. Also in these federal documents, a transcript from a text message between Walker and an unidentified person about receiving bags of narcotics and making sure it's the exact amount. We also learned that on January 14th, an undercover agent and a confidential informant entered this BP gas station in Arlington believed to be owned by Walker, then later confirmed after another informant showed investigators this news for Jack story on Walker becoming the first African-American in Florida to purchase a BP gas station. As I looked around, I realized that gas stations didn't close down through the COVID-19. In March, a confidential informant wearing a recording device and working under the direction of federal agents showed up at the trap house and reportedly purchased Flacca and Molly. Walker and the other suspects have been under constant surveillance from both on the ground and from a helicopter overhead. This is also how investigators say they learned some of the drug transactions took place outside the Bottoms Up Strip Club on Blanding Boulevard. So basically what we have learned is the heavy surveillance combined with that uh, 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 purchase of the controlled purchase of narcotics is what led to uh, Walker and the seven other suspects being indicted. Now, if they are convicted on those charges, they each could face up to 20 years in a federal prison. Reporting live in Arlington, Eric Avignet, Channel 4. More on drugs. The U.S. Attorney's Office has announced the indictment of eight people. They are accused of being members of an armed drug trafficking organization based in Jacksonville. The trafficking allegedly happened at this house right here on 14th Street. All eight suspects face federal charges of distributing Molly and Flacco, which are synthetic drugs. News for Jack's reporter Eric Omnier joining us live outside the federal courthouse downtown where all eight suspects will likely face the judge. Eric. Yes, well, according to this 57-page court document, all eight suspects uh, were uh, selling narcotics, illegal narcotics, out of a home on the east side from 2018 up until about April of this year when they were all busted. We're only just now hearing about this case because all the information was just unsealed by the U.S. US Attorney's Office. Both federal and local investigators say this Jacksonville home on 14th Street is the primary location where eight members of an armed drug trafficking organization sold illegal narcotics. The suspects are identified as 44-year-old Kimberly Walker, 50-year-old Neil Walker, 35-year-old Marcus Peterson, 35-year-old Ramon Aston, 36-year-old Alfred Bell, 20-year-old Marquise Mickler, 24-year-old David Geithers, and 24-year-old Brandisha Williams. Federal investigators say all eight suspects conspired to distribute the synthetic stimulant known as Molly, as well as Flacco, which is a combination of heroin, crack cocaine, and meth. Flacco looks like bath salts. The alleged drug action didn't go unnoticed by neighbors. According to multiple neighbors who were too afraid to comment on camera for fear of violent retaliation, this home was a 24-hour beacon for drug addicts. In fact, they say this strip of 14th Street right in front of the home was more busier than a McDonald's drive through Court documents revealed federal agents not only went undercover to build a case against the suspects, but even went as far as to tap and record their phone calls and monitor their movements by way of aerial surveillance. According to IRS criminal investigators, Kimberly and Neil Walker had dozens of bank accounts that were used for drug trafficking and money laundering. According to investigators, since January of 2018, more than a million dollars passed through these accounts. Federal prosecutors say $185,000 in cash, along with various luxury vehicles, jewelry, and firearms were seized because those items were used to either facilitate the sale of illegal narcotics or were purchased with illegal drug money. And all eight suspects face up to 20 years in federal prison if convicted. Yo, yo, we back. It's your boy, Papa Mob ties. We are now with a Florida with it. Jacksonville. I'm going to go to Jacksonville get in the comment box. Y'all already know how we rocking. Now, today we are going to be covering an ever-elusive female on Mob Ties. A female by the name of Kimberly Michelle Clarity Walker. But we are also covering her to pose the question, is she the person that we should be covering with this Mob Ties episode? As everybody's seen um, for the media coverage, if you do your own history or you do your own research on the trial, you're going to see that they're almost portraying her as like the ringleader or the head of the operation. When we're going to pose the question, uh, is that uh, essentially the case? 
Now, according to the indictments, just a few of the items that were seized going to be a 2015 BMW 550i, 2015 Lexus IS 250, 2013 Audi A8L, a 2020 Riker Rally Edition motorcycle, two Rolexes, numerous items of jewelry, five firearms, um, and they're going to say that the organization predominantly distributed uh, MDMA, Ecstasy, Molly, and also the popular Florida drug Flocka. Now, matter of fact, anybody, if, if, if Flocka is in your city, y'all tap in. And I'm not talking about Florida. We know it's there. It's the hometown. Um, if it hit any other city, if y'all had seen any effects of the Flocka craze, y'all get in the comment box. Now, um, and I guess so be it that the government going to make her uh, the head of the conspiracy. Because if you watched in the media coverage, talked about the numerous businesses she owns. Sound like definitely... Um, a prominent businesswoman, um, even though they uh, they trying to implicate her in something else, so she's innocent to proven guilty. Um, but another question I do want to pose is: Could this be a case of a black person being too successful? Y'all get in the comment box and let me know about that part of about it. Um, because, well, usually when the federal government come for you, they they ain't coming because uh, they just want to hang out. They they know some. They know a thing or two. But um, they have been wrong in the past as well. So um, according to the indictment, uh, the defendant and seven other people were part of an armed drug organization that distributed illegal narcotics, primarily out of a trap house that was located on 14th Street in Jacksonville. Anybody familiar with 14th Street? I seen a house that should look fucked up. I know everything is going down over there. Uh, y'all get in the comment box and let us know if y'all seen any effects of this case. Now, they, the, according to the government, they're going to say the activity began in July of 2018 and continued up until April 13th, 2021, when six of the defendants were arrested. And they're going to say during the course of the conspiracy, during the course of the conspiracy, they obtained kilogram quantities of drugs and then they broke those drugs up and repackaged them for sale to numerous individuals now kimberly walker is definitely probably going to be um the main person that they go at looking at uh financial records they're going to say uh with the assistance of the older the other co-defendants she uh, she laundered approximately ninety eight thousand dollars through financial institutions um from cashier checks uh, she bought properties, the deeds in Jacksonville. They say bank records reflect that between June 13th, 2019 and November 30th, 2020, approximately 330,000 was deposit was deposited and it was entirely in cash and all in the account name of a business that was owned by her and her husband. So it's going to be a lot of evidence that's going to come out in this trial. And it sounds, from what the government is saying, that they try to have these businesses to fluctuate and hide the money. Um, but, yes, yeah, when you have a business, it's just hard to hide. Sometimes you get so much money, it's impossible to hide. And if you know, you know, for real, for real. But I want to know y'all feelings on this case. What y'all think? How do y'all feel about them glorifying her as the head of this case. Do you guys even think that she was the head of this conspiracy? Um, again, it has eight people and, and the ages vary from 50, which was the age of her husband, Neil Merrill Walker, to a 20 year old in the case. And she's gonna fall right in between, actually right after her husband at 44. So y'all get in the comment box, y'all follow me on Instagram, on Twitter. Y'all let me know who we need to cover, what cities we need to visit, what we missed. And y'all know what it is, the mob, 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 ties.